Hey there, good morning. It is Friday the 6th of May 2022. Welcome to the Morning Watch. It's Friday. We made it to Friday. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 20. I um, hope you're well. I hope you rested well. We had some bad storms last night. Um, here, at least we did. Um, but uh, everything's good this morning. Um, if you have any prayer requests, uh, Kim Yance, good morning to you. I'll give a few seconds for people to start rolling in. There's Patty. Good morning to you, Patty and Virgil. Good to see you and Kim Smith. Good morning, everybody. All right, today's going to be a good day. It's always a good day to start the day in the Word of God. Right. There's Wilma. There's my sister Glenna. All right. Good morning to everybody. We got about six people here so far. Let's have a word of prayer, <clears throat> and then we will we will jump in and and get started. If you have any prayer needs, please put those into the chat. I'd love to know what those are. Wilma, continue to pray for for Chris. All right, let's let's pray, and then we will we will get started. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your your loving kindness, your mercy. Lord, thank you for the fact that you've given us exactly what we need. You've given us the Word of God, which shows us what it is to be a follower of you. You've given us your Holy Spirit that lives within our lives, our hearts. Lord, you've given us your protection. You've given us your provision. You've given us the peace that comes from knowing you. You've given you. You've given us more. You've given us a new identity. All the things, Lord, that that we so desperately need. You've given us hope and joy. You've given us the cross, the empty tomb. You've given us your. Word. I want to lift up the prayer needs that exist here in this space with each person that's represented here and their families. We just pray, Lord, that you would take care of them, that you would love them, that you would help them walk through these difficult times, or that you would give them hope and peace and strength and wisdom. <clears throat> Lord, be with Chris. We pray, Lord, that you continue to do a work there. Um, so many needs, Lord, prayer needs that exist in our communities. And Lord, we know that you know about every one of them. Lord, be with us as we dive into your word this morning. We pray that you would let it come alive to us this morning and change our hearts. Make us more like your son. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. There's Annie, Lord, Annie and Rosemary, Donna, my mom. There's Lorene. Good to see all of you. 14 people on a Friday morning. That's pretty good. All right. Well, let's read Psalm, uh, Proverbs chapter 20. All right. So Solomon is writing here. And he says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink, a brawler. And whoever is intoxicated by it is not wise. Okay. So speaking about drinking too much. Um, and becoming intoxicated is not a wise thing to do. It says, The terror of a king is like the growling of a lion. He who provokes him to anger forfeits his own life. He, uh, keeping away from strife, is an honor for a man, but any fool will quarrel. Okay? That's important, Right? We live in a world today where everyone's seeking strife, everyone's seeking conflict. You see that a lot on social media. Here, Solomon is saying, it is an honor for a person to look for ways to avoid strife, especially as a Christian, right? We should be people who are defined by peace, not by quarreling, not by strife, okay? 
because strife will not bring anyone to the Lord. Okay? And so it's understanding that we have to steer away from those things, seeking the Lord to help us stay clear of those things. Okay? The slugger does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. All right? Again, talking about the idea of working and finding value in your work and taking care of yourself and your family. The sluggard, the lazy person. It says, a plan in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding draws it out. I love that, right? Nothing wrong with having plans. Nothing wrong with thinking ahead, right? In fact, that's a good thing. God gave you a mind for a reason. Okay, you got a problem, you got a challenge, you have a plan. <laughs> It's always important, though, to keep the Lord at the center of that plan, right? It's always important to seek Him, seek wisdom from Him about the execution of that plan. But it says here, it's very deep inside of you. And it says, a man of understanding, a person of wisdom, is able to draw it out and take action upon it. It says, many a man proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy man? A righteous man who walks in his integrity. How blessed are his sons after him. Okay. Being trustworthy. Solomon is speaking here about being a person that is worthy of trust. A person is worthy of trust. <clears throat> I'll have to admit that that's, that's uh, you'll find that a lot. Right? You don't find that a lot in folks anymore. Someone who is worthy of trust. Someone that if you need help with something, you know that they will follow through with that. They'll have your back. Okay? And so here he's saying that, um, that, that that's, a, that's a, it's like seeking after treasure. Who can find a trustworthy man? Verse 8, a king who sits on the throne of justice disperses all evil with his eyes. Who can say, this is, a, this is a very important verse, who can say, I have cleansed my heart, I am pure from my sin? Well, number one, Solomon is asking a rhetorical question, knowing that no one, no one can cleanse themselves. It is Christ and his work on the cross that cleanses us from our sins. So Solomon is telling us here that there's a danger. Who, who does that? Who, who can cleanse themselves from all of their sin? I've cleansed my heart. I'm pure. The only purity is in Christ. Right? Now, when we put our faith and our trust in him and believe in him, put our faith in him, repent of our sins, then we have been, the Bible says that we are declared righteous. We've been made righteous. That's different, right? That's different. Because even as believers, we are not pure. Our hearts are still flawed. But yet when God looks at us, he no longer sees the faults. He sees us through the blood of his son. And so Solomon is asking, who can do that? Well, the answer is no one. No one. Differing weights and differing measures, both of them are abominable to the Lord. We've heard this particular kind of verse before, talking about the fact that honesty and measurement, remember back in these, these times, people would buy and sell based upon how much something weighed. And people would put their thumb on the scale. People would cheat people. So this is speaking to honesty and integrity. It is by his deeds that a lad distinguishes himself if his conduct is pure and right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made both of them. Verse 13, coming back to work ethic again. Do not love sleep or you will become poor. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with food. I'll be honest. There's nothing better than at the end of a long day of, of good, honest work to be tired and lay down and love to go to sleep. There's nothing There's nothing better than that. But Solomon is saying here, don't love that at the expense 
of making provision for you and your family. <clears throat> okay. It says, bad, bad, says the buyer, but when he goes away, then he boasts. There's gold and an abundance of jewels, but the lips of knowledge are more precious things. Oh, that's good. The lips of knowledge, saying things that are rooted in the word of God. Verse 16, take his garment when he becomes surety for a stranger, or foreigners hold him in pledge. Bread obtained by falsehood is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. Okay? So anything that you get that's obtained immorally or unethically, it might taste good in the beginning, but it it's going to taste horrible later. Okay? Prepare plans by consultation and make war by guy by wise guidance. What's he saying there? Well, he's talking about that when you go into a situation, having people around you that love the Lord and who are rooted in the Word of God, they can give you good counsel. It's important. Verse 19, who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossip. You know, gossip is held up to be one of the, one of the, anytime you'll hear the Apostle Paul list sins. He will list witchcraft in the same sentence as he will with gossiping. All right? And we gossip. People gossip. They, they gossip uh, typically a whole lot in churches, all right? And sometimes they'll do it under the guise of, of, um, of, of, of concern, okay? So you've got to be careful. Gossip might come to us, but it doesn't need to go out from us. Does that make sense? There's nothing, there's nothing immoral or unethical about somebody telling you something but it needs to die with us, okay? Because it's just, it's just, it's, it's against the word of God. He who curses his father or his mother, his lamp will go out in the time of darkness, okay? And inheritance gained hurriedly at the beginning will not be blessed in the end. Do not say, look at this, this is 22, this is a hard issue. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord and he will save you. It's not our place to seek revenge. It's our place to trust in the Lord for his provision. He will take care of us. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, right? Verse 23, we see this the same thing again. We've already seen this once in this chapter. Here it is back. Differing weights are an abomination to the Lord. And a false scale is not good. Speaking to integrity and honesty and to treating people right. Man, okay, look at this. <clears throat> Verse 24. Man's steps are ordained by the Lord. How then can man understand his way? We, we don't. We don't understand what tomorrow holds, what today holds. But a person's steps, their, their life is laid out by the Lord. They are ordained by him. <clears throat> says it is a trap for man, for a man to say rashly it is holy and after the vows to make inquiry a wise king winnows the wicked and drives the threshing wheel over them but the spirit the spirit of man is the lamp of the lord that's how he, that's he shines through us we're called to be salt and light okay searching all the innermost parts of the being. Loyalty and truth preserve the king, and he upholds his throne by righteousness. The glory of young men is their strength, and the honor of old men is their gray hair. It's kind of funny. Stripes that wound scour away evil, and strokes reach the innermost parts. Man, Proverbs chapter 20 was good. There's a lot there. A lot there for us to think about and meditate on today as we take the Word of God with us into our hearts. I would encourage you, reread this again today if you have time. Maybe take your Bible with you to work or maybe on your phone or whatever. Take time to reread it. Because if you're like me, the more I read something, 
the more it will become real for me and it will seek into my soak into my heart a little bit deeper all right who all's joined us since Shirley and Peggy and Terry and Kim good to see all of you this morning I love you I hope your Friday is a good one we'll be back on Monday morning with Proverbs chapter 21 hope you have a good day uh, let's have a word of prayer and then we will get get started with our day Lord we we love you this morning we're thankful for your word we pray Lord that you would just keep us in the palm of your hand all day long that you'll give us peace today that you will give us wisdom today and that you will give us strength to do all the things that you've called us to do. Let us be salt, Lord, and light in this world. Lord, let us put your word top, top priority in our lives. Lord, we love you and we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, y'all, have a good day. And we will we'll see you Monday. Have a great weekend.